our crusade will be strong and stand with me. Beyond the barricade, is there a world you long to see? Um, our next speaker is our very good supporter in council, um, Yanni Johansson. He's our longest serving councillor and he's a frequent speaker on democracy and the rights of our citizens and he was a very strong supporter of the 12 point resolution against the TPP. So welcome Yanni. Thank you and uh, can I just first off say thank you for the opportunity to say a few words today. Thank you very much to the organisers for putting on today's event and thank you to all of you who have come out despite the weather to stand in solidarity against the TPPA. I want to start with a quote from the Australian electronics retail legend Dick Smith. He said, pressure on big businesses to provide never ending profit growth is driving our economies to a brick wall. He goes on to say, Anyone with any common sense knows that the perpetual growth in a finite world is not possible. He says, oh, I can tell New Zealand, just like Australia or America, perpetual growth in the use of resource and energy is impossible. It's a finite planet. And I want to start with my words today to say the concept that economic growth is beneficial for us all is fundamentally flawed. What is the value of growth if it increases child poverty? If it encourages rising income inequality? And if it destroys our environment? Where is the value in economic growth if it removes our fundamental rights of citizens to make decisions for our country, for our cities, and for our communities. <coughs> I think Christchurch is a great example. It has shown that this government will pursue its economic growth agenda at the expense of our social, cultural, and environmental well-being as a city and as a nation. Just look at the examples of the undemocratic way in which heritage buildings are being knocked down. Just look at who's got control over land use planning in Christchurch. Just look at the financial priorities the government has imposed on the people through the blueprint on this city. Things that we cannot afford, things that we did have no public opportunity to have a say on, and things that local people have been removed from making local decisions about. So growth is a flawed strategy and yet the TPPA looks to embed the harms associated with that growth on those who can least afford it. If growth is so good for us, as apparently it is, according to the TPPA, then why do it in secret? Why not be open and transparent? Why not let us decide if that's a cost worth paying? How ironic that the promoters of this agreement say that it is being done in the name of free trade. There is no freedom in this agreement, no freedom for people to have a say, no freedom for councils to make decisions in the best interests of our cities or of our people. Who is this free for? This is free for the multinationals, but hugely expensive to us. Freedom is about having the right to make choices and to have self-determination and autonomy. And sadly in Canterbury we know this only too well. <coughs> we have seen it with the removal of an elected ECAN in the interests of dairy being good for our economy and for the country. Just look what happened there. Who's now going to pick up the cost of that failed experiment? And when the water quality targets aren't met, we don't see the reverse happening. We don't see the commissioners being unappointed and elected representatives being put in their place. Freedom is not about being told what is happening. It is about being free to have access to information and to make choices in the name of a democracy. The consequences for local councils are massive for the, from the TPPA. It could force us into having no longer social, cultural and environmental 
objectives for our own companies. It could force us not to support our local contractors and local workers, and it could enable the use of widespread importation of workers on lower wages and prevent us from having a living wage. It could also force us to consent to things that cause and have massive environmental impacts and risks. And just think of the quarrying that's now happening on our aquifers and what the TPPA would do for that for a council that wants to stand up and say it's not appropriate. <laughs> so in the reality of this agreement, this is about selling off our sovereignty and it's about taking away our freedom in the name of free trade. What an irony when the reality is the TPPA is about making us modern day slaves to multinational corporations in our own country, our own cities, and in our own communities. I leave you with this thought. The only growth I support is the growth of opposition to this obscene and obnoxious agreement. I stand with you in solidarity today to say TPPA, no way. Thanks, Yanni. Awesome. Okay, very quickly, one last speech. Charles Drace, he's a local businessman. He's talking on behalf of It's Our Future Christchurch. We've got a little bit of housekeeping. We need to tell you what's going on and give you instructions about how we're going to do this. And so give Charles a warm welcome. Good day, everyone. John Key, I hope you're listening. Because there's a whole bunch of people here who are shouting at you to behave. Uh, first, a little bit of housekeeping. I want to thank Neil Gard of Think Steel for this truck that he's lent us today. Thank you, Neil. The United States Embassy has put out a warning that there may be trouble in this march, and there will be troublemakers in this march, and uh, we know that's not going to be true, but if you do see a troublemaker, make sure you get a long way away. Maybe take a photo, send it to the police. We are a clean mob. We're here for the country and we're not going to cause any problem. Now, not only is this going to be a tremendous march, but it's going to be a march with a difference. We haven't told you about this yet. When we get to Rickerton Mall, we want half the people here today to go into the mall, and we promise you some entertainment. We're going to have a flash mob. It's going to be in the food court. So there's four ways to get into the mall. Go in all of the different ways and assemble around the food court. And we've got a tremendous um, flash mob sing, uh, group singing to us today. Now, keep your cameras concealed, otherwise they'll ask you to leave. And also, we can't take signs in. So we ask half of you to go into the mall, the other half to give your sign to someone else to take down the Shams Crescent. So it's going to be great. Now listen, there's one thing about this. It's not suitable for young kids or those with claustrophobia because it's going to be very packed. Okay, we're here today to talk about justice. And we're here today to talk about freedom. This TPVPA will put us in a situation where we cannot have justice and we cannot have freedom and do you feel like I feel that we must protect our health system and we must protect our education system and we must protect our families and our businesses and our economy and we must protect our environment we must not let this act prevent us from taking action against climate change. We must not let this act keep us from biosafety standards. We must not let this act keep us having clean rivers, clean beaches. We must not let this act put dirty oil on our beaches for the deep sea oil drilling. We must not let this act allow mining in our national forests and in our seabeds. And we must fight and continue to fight for democracy. So 
And today, we are going to march down Rickerton Road to Shams Crescent, burn out that exit there. We are going to march with faith in our hearts. We're going to march with justice and freedom in our hearts. And we're going to tell the world, and particularly John Key and Tim Grosser, let us have sovereignty. Let us have democracy. Now let's march. And as we march, let us sing in unison. Follow with me. We shall overcome someday. Let's march. Let's go. Let's go. Let's march. Keep singing. We shall.